Hello everyone and welcome to our Macquarie Life online service. If you are checking us out for the first time, thanks for joining. Our prayer is that everyone who is tuned in would feel the tangible and life-changing presence of God through this service. And what a service it is going to be. We have live chat hosts who would love to connect with you. So don't be shy and say hi in our chat. Now, as you all know, we had our national Anzac commemorations this week, remembering and honouring all of the fallen soldiers that have so valiantly laid down their lives in wars, conflicts and peacekeeping operations all around the world. It marks the first major military action from World War I, and I also find it always find it humbling to think about the soldiers that fought for our freedom without even knowing the names and the faces of most of the people they were fighting for, their fellow Australians and New Zealanders. It's a beautiful parallel to the sacrifice of our own saviour, Jesus, who made that for us. And it's a timely reminder of what we read in John 15, that says, Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Friends. That's what we all are to someone. So as we launch into our service, let's not only remember the sacrifice of our saviour and our Anzacs, Let's keep in mind that we all have the responsibility to be someone's friend, to be someone's encourager, to be someone's voice when they don't have their own, to be someone's shoulder to cry on, and to be someone's answer to prayer. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this service. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your grace and your favor and your loyalty to us. We thank you for your sacrifice, Jesus. And right now, we just want to commit this service to you, Father. For everybody watching right now, I just pray they would feel your presence in their living rooms, in their cars, in their offices. Father, be with us today as we journey together. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we are about to head into a time of worship together before hearing from the one and only Dan Zare. Now, Dan is one of our senior leadership teams, uh, and he has a heart for evangelism and serving the community. He's always full of energy, and we'll probably have to hear a few dad jokes as well. Uh, He will be speaking on building blocks of together. Whoa. Uh, So let's lean in and position ourselves to be encouraged, challenged, and inspired. Savior King, your loving kindness has welcomed me. Though I'm unworthy of majesty, you wrap the lowly in royalty. Oh, I will lay my crowns down at your holy, holy, and I will give my life as an offering. You are worthy, so worthy, your altar to seek your face broken and poured out without restraint in full abandon before my king here I surrender my everything oh I will So worthy and 
Join with all of heaven in the everlasting song. broken, isn't it? Our world is very broken. And that's why I love that we are doing this series together, together at the moment. Jacques shared a brilliant message last week on when together falls apart. And I really encourage you to have a listen to it. But this week, I'm going to be sharing with you on the building blocks of together. How do you create together? How do you build unity in team? How do you find collaboration and unity when teams are struggling and when you've got to bring in new culture. So that's what I'm going to be sharing on. But just before we do that, this has already been an amazing service, but it's about to get even better. We have got Emmy, who did Alpha last year. She's going to come up on, sh- on stage, and we're going to talk a little bit about Alpha because we've got Alpha starting in two weeks. So can you give her a clap as she comes up? <laughs> Welcome, Emmy. Thanks for being a part of our church. Tell us a bit about yourself and why you did Alpha last year. I'm Emmy, and I've been coming here for about two years, so I'm still a baby Christian. Um, And I decided to join Alpha because Roz encouraged me um, when she helped me welcome Jesus into my life. Yeah. Awesome, Emmy. Are we on to the second question already? Love it. Good. (laughs) This is brilliant. I love it. Okay, how did the Alpha course help shape your foundation as a Christian and what did you enjoy about the course? So um, before Alpha, um, I was really just hungry for to connect with God and I think at that time all I really had was just coming to church every Sunday and I think Alpha just um, helped me find a place to start and find some personal connections within the church and it just helped me answer lots of questions that I had um, about like prayer and the Bible and all that kind of thing and the thing that I most enjoyed was just being a part of the relaxed environment and um, just having open discussions with everybody. We had a great team. We did. We had a great time (laughs) last year, didn't we, Em? (laughs) So what would you say to anyone considering doing Alpha this year or inviting someone along? I would just say go for it. It's literally changed my life um wow. it's really welcomed me into the church and set me on my own path wow. with god um and it's just so much fun and it's a beautiful group of people yeah, yeah. it's given you this whole new deepness to, to your christian faith to help really build has. upon hasn't it yeah yeah so anyone who's asking questions if you've got anyone in your world who has got some big questions is there more to life than this Bring them along. You can sign up online. We're starting 
on May the 9th, on a Thursday. Emmy is a part of our Alpha team this year, which is incredible. So we do a free dinner. We're out there in the cafe, and we, we, we get to journey together uh, with this group. And last year, we had 22 people that did the course. This year, we've already got eight people signed up. So we really encourage you, especially if you're new in your faith as well, to th- really consider coming along. Um, you can sign up online through our church website. But can we please give Emmy a clap? Uh, we love having you in our church, Emmy. We're so pleased you're a part of our, our family, Macquarie family. Brilliant. Okay. Together in unity was at the forefront of Jesus' mind. The absolute forefront. And we see this upper room discourse when the Passover feast is taking place. We see what Jesus is doing, how he's encouraging his disciples with these last few moments to think about love for one another. It was at the complete forefront of his thinking. And so we are called to unity as a team, the saints, aren't we? Not the St. George Dragons, by the way. Thank God for that. Definitely not a dragon supporter. Come on, you knights. We need a bit more prayer, don't we? Get a bit more action this season. Bad start of the season. But the saints, we are a part of a team. And there are countless scriptures of when there is the spirit of unity and when there is the spirit of togetherness and the outcome is always fruit and multiplication that is followed. When you start to see these scriptures and delve into them, one can put a 1,000 to flight, two can put 10,000 to flight. That is the spirit of multiplication. As iron sharpens iron, one man sharpens another. And that beautiful scripture that gets read out at lots of weddings. um, One can, uh, what is it? Uh, Two shall withstand, sorry. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a three-standard cord is not quickly broken. And so God is into collaboration. He knows the power of connection. And if as the church we can strengthen our bond of connection and our network, we become so much more powerful. But as soon as we step into division and isolation and judgment, that's when the wheels start to fall off as we have seen throughout the history of the church. And I'm telling you now, unity in the spirit of together is such a powerful force. An unstoppable force. And that's why it was at the forefront of Jesus' mind. There's this beautiful quote from Stanley Grimes. And it says this, he says this, Only in our spirit produce corporateness do we truly ref- reflect all creation. The grand dynamic that lies at the heart of the triune God. As we share together in the Holy Spirit, we to participate in the relationship with the living God and therefore become the community of Christ our Lord. And so unified collaboration reflects our creator. Collaboration and unity reflects our creator. And so we're going to have a look at an example from Scripture today where teamwork makes the dream work, okay, where the spirit of together brings us towards Christ. Nehemiah 3. Nehemiah, if you don't know the story of Nehemiah, I really encourage you to delve into that, uh, that um, passage of Scripture and start to sink your teeth in and digest it. It is an incredible story, and we're going to have a bit of an overview and look at it today. But in Nehemiah 3, you start to see this picture taking place where the city of Jerusalem is in an absolute pile of ruins. The wall has been destroyed. The Babylonians have burned it down, but not, now God has given Nehemiah the dream of rebuilding the wall around the city of Jerusalem. And a map is going to come up on the screen for you. Nehemiah was tasked with the job on, of leading the team to help repair this wall. You can see 10 gates there taking place. And Nehemiah started at the sheep gate. That was his starting place. Now, Nehemiah was not a civil engineer. He wasn't a builder, wasn't a carpenter. He was a wine connoisseur. 
He was a wine connoisseur for the Persian king. What a job. That's the kind of job I want in heaven. Thank you, Jesus. But he didn't have the background. He didn't have the education in the building space. But he had the heart, he had the desire and the drive to absolutely bring unity for his fellow countrymen to rebuild that wall. Now, I believe it's almost prophetic that he starts at the sheep gate. Because when you have to start somewhere in a team to try and bring unity in, you've got to start from a perspective of, okay, these are the people that I'm working with. These are like the sheep. And what do sheep need? They need leadership. They need care. They need communication. The pastoral gift the pastoral gift, the scriptures talk about how pastoral gift is very pastoral in terms of making sure you're getting alongside, you're taking care, looking after the needs of the sheep. And that's where a really good place to start is you start to look at the needs of the people in a team. Awesome. So, Nehemiah faces ex- absolutely extraordinary opposition. And I don't have time to go into that opposition, but there's... There's lies that get made up that are brought to him about prophetic words. There, are, there is opposition from officials, his own countrymen. Uh, he has to encourage his guys to, f- to have a sword with them at all times. And then as they're re- rebuilding the wall, he places officials with spears in all these different positions. So there's incredible opposition that's taking place. And so when you dig in and beneath this chapter, God gives us this incredible example of how to bring that spirit off together. And so my first point to really bring to you is this. Let others share the ownership. Let others share the ownership. You know, ownership increases motivation. This week, I was up on my roof, blowing leaves off my roof. And sure enough, as I go to take a step on one section of my roof tiles, my foot falls straight through. And here I am in shock, but also thankful that my whole body did not go through the roof. I then decide to then go crawl through our manhole and have a better look underneath. And as I'm doing this, my foot slips again through the jip rock. And here I have two wall, two holes in my roof with my big Clydesdale feet that have just gone through. And I made a call to my good friend, Mitchie Stafford. A little shout out to him. He's a builder, Stafford Built. Ah, you know, giving him a business plug right there. But he rearranged a few things and he was able to come over this week and help start repairing some of that, uh, one of the holes for me. But um, to to build or rebuild together, you need to share ownership. And my ownership in this moment, in this week, I own this house. My interest is in this house. I want my house to be safe, to be protected. And when you start to own something, you start to see value, you start to place more value on something. And so in a team, if you want to bring unity, you need to start sharing ownership, making sure you can draw people in, giving them responsibility, help them start to own it because then they can start to take more value and more interest and pay more attention and focus into that goal or target or dream that you want to achieve. So how do you share ownership? Two things. Two things that you need to do if you want people to share ownership. Number one, show people how the dream will benefit them. You've got to show them. You've got to give them something to show that it's actually going to benefit them, contributing to something bigger than themselves. The second thing you need to do then is empower them to make decisions and then even sometimes serve their decisions and ideas. Jesus tells us, I've not come to be served, but to serve. And to bring unity into a team, service needs to play a huge role. You know, many times in Nehemiah 3, the phrase, by his own house, is used many times throughout this passage of Scripture, by his own house. And what Nehemiah was doing, he was getting these guys to rebuild right near their house. 
So they didn't have to go and, ch- and they didn't have to go to other parts of Jerusalem and catch donkey Ubers to the different areas to rebuild. They are building the wall right near their house. So their interest is most their interest is focused around right where their house is. So why wouldn't these guys be wanting to put a huge amount of effort and energy into protecting that wall, surrounding their place, hedging their place into. And so it really is uh, vitally important in order to share ownership that you can um, place others in a proximity and an environment where they are interested in. That's why even when you come to serving in an area in our church, serve in, serve in an area that you are interested in. In. It will help with your ownership of this house and this church. Okay, number two, develop a team spirit. <clears throat> this guy you're going to see on screen, Eddie Jones. This guy was on a mission to change Australian rugby. He made a promise to the Australian public that the Aussies would fight hard and steal the World Cup title at the end of last year. And in January, Eddie took over. January 2023, became the head coach. He had 145 days. But Eddie, his approach was really interesting. He decided to have a complete overhaul of the culture in the Wallabies. He changed the playing roster, bringing in young players, sweeping out old experienced players. He brought in new staff. And it was this complete cultural overhaul that he was after and trying to do it in 145 days and then promising the victory of a World Cup. Highly ambitious in a short time frame. And guess what? He failed. It was the worst performance of Australian rugby in any World Cup ever. It was a complete flunk. And I was frustrated and disappointed, as were many other Aussies. And I was really annoyed then when Eddie then decided to take up a job at the Japanese rugby club and take on that uh, position and left us in a bit of a hole. And he'd promised all these things and then failed to deliver. They didn't have the building blocks of that spirit of unity and together. They needed to listen to Jacques' message last week, didn't they, Kat? But he failed to build cohesion and he failed to get these wins on the board. And can I tell you that when you were trying to bring in some change to culture or when you're trying to bring unity onto a team, you need to get them to experience success. You've got to get some wins on the board early. And I'm talking just providing some simple low-hanging fruit from a tree. I'm not talking about the tree up the top. Eddie was talking about going for that apple up the top of the tree, the top of the, we're going to win this World Cup, when he should have been saying, hey, we're we're rebuilding. We're bringing in this new culture. Hey, we're not going to probably win this World Cup. We're going to give it a good crack. But he didn't do that. And so be careful. If you push too hard, you will destroy that spirit of togetherness and unity. Really important to provide some low-hanging fruit when it comes to that unity. You know, In Nehemiah, that passage in in chapter 3, again, this phrase is used 21 times next to them, next to them, and next to them, and next to them. 21 times in 32 verses. This is proving to us that next to them has to be the culture within a team. Next to them, next to them, next to them. And I tell you, if you get tired of rebuilding, if you get tired of building, look next to you. Look to the people in your world on the left and the right. Look to them. You know, geese fly 72% further when they are in a group, when they are in that V formation. And so Paul, even Paul never did ministry by himself. He'd always bring along Timothy or Silas or Barnabas. He would do it in partnership together. Even Jesus, he had that small group of men that he brought along for those three years of ministry. You know, Kipchoge is a marathon runner who has the world record for the fastest ever marathon. He broke two hours a couple of years ago. However, he's never been able to beat that time again. And the reason he was able to break this two-hour mark, well, one of the reasons is because he did it in a team. 
with runners surrounding him and in front of him, pacing him, helping him. So I've got to tell you this. When it comes to spirit and team culture, you have to be next to people. You've got to be in partnership. There's no point, no point going alone. Team spirit is the we in the us. It's the language of that. It's not the language of I and me. As soon as you get into that language space of I and me, you're starting to set yourself up for failure. Because guess who is then going to be turning to you when things all go wrong? You're going to be the only person that is brought is, is expected to be solving all the problems. But if you're using language like us and we, you're, acti- you're actually collectively opening it up for others to come in and help with the problem solving and resolving as well. Is this making sense, everyone? Is this okay? Great. Let's keep moving. Number three, to bring a build... uh, Sorry, number three, third building block. Love everyone, but invest in the willing. This is a strategy of Jesus. Yes, Jesus cared for the crowd. He fed the 5,000, but who did he invest in? He invested in the 11. He invested in the three. He invested in the willing. So we have to learn to spend maximum time with those who bear the biggest responsibility. In Galatians, James calls Peter, James, and John the pillars of the church. Did it work? Did this strategy work? Yes. This system of building in and spending maximum time with those who carry maximum responsibility and those who are most willing is a criteria for success. Allow the people who are closest to you to get the best of you. I wish I got paid to take care of the things that matter most. My family, having some good rest time. These are all important things. Exercise. But do I get paid for those? No, I don't. I wish I did. We all wish we did. <laughs> but what you have to understand is if we focus too much on the things that can cause us to succeed, such as careers and all of that, the things that matter most can get shafted to the side and neglected. And when this starts to fall apart because we've been too focused and occupied on this, this thing here we'll start to fall off and we can start to find ourselves fighting battles on all different fronts. So the wisdom really is making sure that we can be really mindful of stewarding well what God has given us, a building block of learning to take responsibility for the things that have been entrusted to us. What did God do in the parable of the tenants? When that guy did not steward and take care of what he had been given, it was removed from him. So be very mindful. You know, I know that when I come home after a big day's work, I tell myself this, Dan, give yourself 20 minutes of maximum energy with the family. (laughs) Give yourself 20 minutes. I'm already pretty cooked after doing some PE teaching or even working in here in the office. But I know that I've got a toddler at home. I know that I've got a baby at home and I've got a wife that's been looking after them all day long. And so I realise if I can just give 20 minutes of maximum energy and find that extra space, it's actually going to help bring unity and strengthen my family. So when I get home, the first thing that happens is Lola runs to me, my little toddler. She gives me 30 seconds of her maximum energy and then that backs off. Don't worry, I'll put her into a performance review for that later on. She hasn't turned up to many of her performance reviews, by the way. Might be uh, looking at a redundancy payout, actually. Maybe some tiny teddies. No, I'm only joking. Um, but I know that I've got, to, I've got to put value in. And then after that 20 minutes, sometimes I say to Lizzie, I've just got to sit down for five minutes. <laughs> I've just got to sit down for five minutes. Uh, but... Nehemiah, in Nehemiah 3 verse 15, sorry, 3 verse 5, um, he comes across people that are really reluctant in his team. Let me read the, let me read the scripture to you. The next section was repaired by the men of Tekoa, 
but their nobles would not put their shoulders to the work under their supervisors. He doesn't go any further. He doesn't tell us why. He doesn't give us an explanation of how they're feeling about it. He doesn't do that. Um, he isn't racking his brain, speculating, finding excuses for them. He, uh, all he does is moves straight on. And sometimes there will be a reluctance from people in team. There will be complaining in a team. But I tell you what, if you focus on the lowest energy on in a team and the lowest complaint all the time, you'll end up missing out on the promised land. What happened to the Israelites when they constantly complained? They missed out on their inheritance. And complainers can miss out on their inheritance. So don't put your energy into every single complainer in a team. Put your energy into the willing. You never lead down to the lowest energy in a room. All right, let's keep moving. My last point. Never stop saying thank you. A huge building block, a huge building block for creating together is thanking people, is that encouragement. It's recognising and celebrating. It's recognising success and joining people in with that. Nehemiah 3 verse 20. Next to him, Barak, son of, I can't even say this name, Zebai, zealously repaired another section from the, uh, sorry, from the angle to the entrance of the house of Elishabib, the high priest. Nehemiah doesn't say that about anybody else. Who is it around you that you need to appreciate? Here's this guy zealously repairing the wall, and Nehemiah mentions him in the Scriptures. Can I tell you, there's a couple of things you need to recognise and celebrate in teams. Recognise and celebrate the extra effort. Matthew Matthew 5.41, if anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them too. Someone on your team goes the extra mile, celebrate them. Next thing to celebrate, generosity. Anyone takes away your coat, give him your cloak also. You see generosity on a team, you celebrate it. Next thing to recognise and celebrate, love for enemies. Someone loves an enemy, you recognise and you celebrate that. Another thing to recognise and celebrate, fun. You know, life is so short. We've got to bring a spirit of fun into our workplaces into our teams. It is a building block. People get attracted to positive atmospheres. If you don't sometimes keep things playful, people can lose their sense of spice around it and disengage. Keep things fun. Keep things playful. It is a building block. Great. I'm finishing off now. I talked about thanking people on that last point and celebrating success. But do you know one of the other huge building blocks to finish on is supporting people in their failure and helping people process their grief, coming into their grief with them. And I'm going to tell you a story now as a church where this has taken place. Uh, You can see a photo coming up on the screen now. Pastor Reynolds is the man in the middle with the walking frame. This is the pastor uh, who was leading Oslop Church in the Philippines. And as a church, last year, you generously were able to rebuild this church. And Pastor Reynolds has had a number of ongoing health complications. And sadly, one month ago, he passed away. After being bedridden for two years, our team, our missions team actually got to visit him last year and see all the family. I took this photo last year. But Pastor Reynolds was a very godly man. 30 years he pastored this small church in Oslo. And as I mentioned, we got to rebuild his church, his community church. You'll see the next photo We put the roof on and put all these walls in. We've put in new flooring as well. And I got this message from his church community. 
I believe Pastor Reynolds' last goal, his last goal was to see a building constructed for Oslob Community Church so that God's people could worship, fellowship, and be equipped to evangelize others for Jesus. His job was done and dream fulfilled and seeing the building constructed before he went home. You'll see the next picture. And this was his funeral that took place in this church building that we as a church collectively rebuilt. Our giving went towards this and together we were able to do this as a church. So well done, church. Well done. And we join and walk into people's grief, failure, and loss with them. We need each other to help process that grief. And because I tell you this, when you do that, it's not about the rebuilding. It's about the restoring. You're actually bringing in restoration for people on your team, when you do that, when you come in, you help each other grieve, you stand alongside, the restoration starts to take place. And Jesus is our ultimate restorer, isn't he? We learn from him when it comes to restoring. So if you can close your eyes. Jesus, you are the ultimate restorer, the ultimate. You can restore brokenness, broken situations, relationships. You can bring hope into hopelessness. And devastated, devastating circumstances, you can bring light. And right now, Holy Spirit, for your people in this place, I just declare your goodness to wash over them. And Father, we take on that position of, of walking into others, uh, walking into other people's grief, standing next to them. But right now, Jesus, I just want to thank you, Father, for your goodness that you have modeled to us and you love us so much to lead us into teams. Collaboration is your idea. Teamwork comes from you. Thanks, Dan, for that word. I hope that you have been able to take something away from that message. And just remember, the takeaway isn't just for us. We need to take it into our world, into our relationships, and cultivate our takeaway into a pay it forward. Amen? Okay, as we begin to wrap up our service, if you would like to financially give into the heart and mission of Macquarie, we often call this a tithe or an offering. There are some details on the screen for how you can do that. You know, the church is essentially the longest standing crowdfunding movement in history, and we are so thankful for everyone's generosity as we continue to spread the gospel message across our city and our world. Mother's Day service. We have got Mother's Day coming up on May the 12th. So come ready to celebrate the mums in our world. We will be having a 8 a.m., 10 a.m. and online service. There will be no p.m. service that week. Macquarie Women, on Monday the 27th of May, Mac Women are getting together for an encounter night. Come on. It is at 7 p.m. here at the church and you'll be hearing from guest speaker Anne-Marie Skinner. Make sure to invite your friends. It's one you will not want to miss. Well, that just about wraps up our service for today. Next week, we've got Mark McLennan, who's going to be speaking on Together, the Body of Christ. Oh, that's going to be a good message. Thanks so much for joining. And remember to turn that takeaway into a pay it forward and add some value to the people in your world. Until next time, be blessed, and we'll see you all next week.